Hello everyone and welcome to the Man United Agenda and tonight is our preview show for Manchester United versus Fulham. So, on Monday, Talk MU, Big Phil, Mr B. Welcome guys, welcome. How's everyone doing today? Good, 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 good. good. I just want to say uh, I made a big error. I spoke too soon when Liverpool drew in one. Oh, I was so excited for Nicky Drew. <laughs> And then, yeah, so I feel I feel like a fool right now. Well done, Alison. Well done, Alison. Well we, yeah, fantastic goal. We were on the same feed and got cussed by the same person. So, yeah. So, um, at the moment, I'm going to go through um, some a little bit of stats, to be fair, um, with everyone. So, Man United, Fulham against Man United. Fulham lost six games. They've drawn one, lost five. So, Man United, one, two, drawn one, lost three of our last um, six games. Let's go to Big Phil here. Big Phil, <laughs> we're Man United and we lost two, drawn one. <laughs> we lost three, sorry. One, two, drawn one. That's not the form of someone going, a team going into a cup final, is it? No, I mean... We, we 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 were very the last time I was confident in Manchester United was against the was against Aston Villa, and we won three what well, we won three one right. Since then, I honestly don't know what to think about Manchester United right now. Um, Fulham, yeah, they have um, a dismal um, record, but football still plays on the day, right? Our rep, and I th I think this game is at Old Trafford, correct? Yes. And what's, what has been our record at Old Trafford this season? Not that great, right? We have a better away form than our home form. And it, it kind of it confuses me when, when people celebrate us being the comeback kings, right? You know, you know, being, being the comeback kings, should not strike you as like, you know, we're always going down a goal or two goals. Um, that should signal that our defense needs to be looked at um, this upcoming summer. Right, but um, back to the Fulham and Manchester United game, we def we, we, we definitely have to send a message, like Amande was saying, like we have to send a message not only to Fulham, we got to send a message to Villarreal as well because I've been looking at the past couple of matches for Villarreal and they haven't been doing that well either. So I mean, I'm kind of getting a little bit of confidence because they themselves aren't doing well. But we are we we are also sending a message to Villarreal that hey, we just lost four two to Liverpool. We just lost uh, three one to Leicester, right? So they themselves are kind of thinking that you know if those team if those two teams can do it, we can do it as well. So I think this match versus Fulham will be a great way to signal yo, yeah, we lost against um, Leicester. Yeah, we lost against Liverpool, but we just put one two three four five goals past Fulham. Just just as, as an example, right? So yeah. Thank you. Um, let's go talk MU now. Talk MU with obviously what Big Phil's saying. It's almost like making statement, and uh, I get frustrated. And I think as all Man United football fans, we get frustrated for some reason or another. It's almost like we have to go a goal down before we come back into a game. We did it against Fulham as well in the last game we played against them as well. Uh, when it comes to better opposition, it doesn't happen, does it? Mm. No, um, it's, it's a bit of a strange, it's a bit of a strange thing, isn't it, really? But um, I think for us, like this Fulham game, I just think because we've got what we've got Fulham and Wolves last two games. Um, the Wolves one is obviously they're going to be the harder game of those two. Um, but again, I think for me, for, with Ole, he needs, there has to be some kind of managing of. Of the of the squad itself, uh, of the the you know the, the the sort of mental side of it, keeping players happy, keeping players hungry, like I said before. So, and to be honest, let's have it right. I mean, you know, Fulham, you know, like you say, Scotty Park is a great, he's a great, he's a great bloke. But at the end of the day, even if we was to put out, I believe that team that we put out. Um, Last was it against last? Was it the last game? Last um, game, yes. Ten changes. I think even if we was to put that team out, I think we'd get a result against them. If I'm not totally honest, with you. I really do. And I think a lot of the time, our problem 
our problem is when we do not move the ball quickly enough. And, you know, that, that, that's been our... If you go back and look at loads of the games where we've got points and come a cropper, then it's there where, where, where we just don't move the ball quick enough. Dawdle. And, you know, dawdling just doesn't... It just doesn't work for us. So, and I think going into the final, obviously that's... Yeah. What, what, how would it look if Holly was to go out and put his full strength, full strength uh, team out against Fulham and we get a couple of injuries, key injuries, and, he, and then he's asked by the board, wait, well, why, why did you do that? And he says, well, I, I, you know, I want to make sure that I, got, I won this game. He'd be like, well, but why do, why do you need to win that? You tell me why you have to win that game. I know what I said before about the second place. We don't want to rel- relinquish it. However, would you take third place and a win in the Europa? Europa League final or second place and, and lose the final. So, because I know what I'd take. So, again, mm. for me, he's all it has to, he's got to think about this long and hard now going into this game. And I'll tell you now, it wouldn't surprise me if he actually does maybe, yeah, three, maybe, yeah, two or three uh, uh, changes, key, key personnel, uh, and give them, give them a rest. Because what better way to instill some kind of uh, confidence and kind of belief in a player? Where you say, listen, I'm resting you for this game because I need you in that final. But mm. if, if we get in trouble here, I'm going to need you to go on there and you do the business for me. So that's what I need from you. And if they do out and we do that, all great, all well and good. But hopefully we won't need to do that because I just believe there is nothing that Fulham can really offer us, if I'm totally honest with you. Great, great um, analysis there. But now I'm going to reverse reverse something you said and I'm going to give it to a Monday now. On Monday, Talk MU made a very valid point about resting key players. Now, looking at, again, I'm going to say it, looking at Fulham's record in their last six games, they've lost five, drawn one, Man United won two, drawn one, lost three. Could you see Ole asking Bruno Fernandes to sit on the bench tomorrow? As we know, Bruno Fernandes picks himself. Uh to be honest, I can't see it. I think Bruno would have an argument to say, I want to keep ticking over for the final. Because uh, he seems to like to, what he wants to play all the time, it seems. And uh, this is what's keeping Donny out and everything else. And I think his, he must have a huge personality. I'm guessing, I'm speculating again. I'm not saying I've got the phone call to inside. <laughs> I know you guys are going to try and say that, but I'm just speculating. Uh, Swat I, the fly off the wall. Swat the fly off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> inside job, inside job. I know. But um, I think uh, Bruno, with his personality, wanted to play every game, and he probably says, well, I, "If I, I don't want to go go off form, I need to keep keep hot, keep hot, keep me nice and warm by playing all the time." That's what's happened throughout the season. So Oli would have to, and Oli, and to back out of that, Oli hasn't shown to me big enough cojones to say, "No, you're out, you're you know," and make those um, substitutions, not substitutions, but different selections. So I don't see it happening. The major issue for me with this game and with this lack of rotation is what's happened to Harry Maguire. And like you said, I've always, I'm not trying to say I told you so, but I've all, uh, you know how much I endorse Harry Maguire. I love the guy so much and how much he means to our squad. So my concern now is I'm really worried. I'm a bit shaky about the next few games, having lost the last two without Harry Maguire. Um, this We're seeing a major, major I- impact with him missing. So I'm concerned about the other two players, Lindroff. Let's score them the last two games and we'll see. We can just about make 10, you know, in, in, if you add up their scores. You know, do you know what I'm saying? So it's not good enough. That's my concern. Through lack of pro, uh, rotation, as Mr. B said, these guys haven't had an opportunity to play together. But Harry Maguire has been the mainstay. And I think we could afford more. This is what I'm saying. Harry Maguire is more important than Bruno, more important than Shaw, because we can't afford to lose Harry Maguire. But we can maybe, as like um, Talk MU says, put someone else in for Bruno and let give him a rest. So this is what I think, but like I say, the pressure's not on me; it's on Oli. So he's likely to go with um, Bruno and not and not um, bow to any any not show any cooners to sort of make that that, that needed selection. Um, it's like I say, it's really di- like really important times now. Three games left; they should be free. They're free games to gauge who what it should be. Is like we should be seeing. I'm going to give you a run out so you can prove to me you're fit for the final. Yeah, and, and players should be thinking, oh, boss, give me a run out against Fulham. 
I want to say, you know, I proved to you I'm ready for the final, you know, to put that in the boss's head. That's how it should be. But I can see the boss picking the same team that you pick, Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't change that team for the next three matches because that's how it's probably going to be. You know, your little lineup. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. V. Mr. B, um, some great um, comments there from the guys. Going into the game now, going on form. Form's out the window and form's always out. And it seems that Man United this season struggles with the lower teams, struggle ultimately with the lower teams because they play a certain block. Now, tomorrow we play against, well, we play against Fulham, whose form is almost as good as our form. What do you what do you see like like the guys are talking about resting players? Could you see the Bruno the likes of Bruno Fernandez getting rested? Could you see the likes of I probably think even Luke Luke Shaw picks himself to be honest with you, um, because at the moment for me it's like it's worrying for me if he goes out. I'm I'm going to give you the squad that I'm picking and see if you guys agree with what I'm thinking behind it. Our team. <sighs> We've still, the thing is, we've still got what have we got? 10 days, we've still got two league games, really. I think we probably need a point to be honest. I think we need one point from two games to get the second place. I don't see why the players need resting for this game. You know, I know everybody's saying rest players, but to me, you just play your strongest team this week. The next game, you play the team that played against Leicester. And then for the final, you play whoever you want to play. Because I'm surely it would be enough time in a rest period. Our season finishes on the Sunday? Or is it the yes. last game of Sunday? Yes, 23rd. And then the final's the Wednesday. Yes. So do you really want them to have a whole week's rest where they're only training and have a kick to ball? Or do you give them a sniff of the last game to keep them to try and keep their momentum going. I don't think the Fulham game's an issue. I think it's the last game. What he does in the last game that'd be more of an issue, I believe. Maybe I've got that wrong, but I'm just looking at how much days we've got to you can't start resting players now for the final. But, it's but that's for me the away. risk so, sorry Mr B, but the risk for me there is that is like I said, the big the tougher game there is Wolves. It's, that's gonna be that'd be a diff, more difficult game, wouldn't it? The Wolves game. Yeah, but you know, are we so, are we are, are we looking at it in a way where I understand the Wolves is a harder game, but I know okay, I know we want to go into every game winning, but the final now is our end game. That is now what we're aiming for. I'm just thinking, regardless of whether it, it's a hard game or an easy game, we need to concentrate on keeping our players fit for the final. So that's more where I was thinking about maybe resting them, resting them this week or doing a half rest instead of doing the whole 10 changes. Maybe change five players, five and five, you know, to give them that mix. And at least then the weaker squad of players are actually going to be playing with a higher class of players because you look at one like Ahmad. If Ahmad is playing with our first team, I think he looks better rather than playing with... Um, the matters, the matters who we all know are aren't first team players. But maybe if he mixes it up, it might get it might get the best out of the lesser players or the lesser the players who have a um, lesser game time, and then move them on. And then next week you do it again. And then for the final, then you've kept everybody fit and everybody involved. So, my team, what I've picked is going to be Henderson. Juan Bissaka, Twan Zibi, um, Linderoff, Luke Shaw, Fred Scott, Greenwood, and Bruno Fernandes, Pogba, and Cavani. Any changes there, guys? Yeah, you put Twan Zibi in there. Is there Bailey out, did you say? No, I think Twan Zibi will play after this performance the other day, after Bayer's performance the other day. Okay. I, I haven't seen any pattern or for that to come to... Uh, I think, uh, I, I honestly think... I think he'd play Bailey, to be honest. If Maguire is out injured, Twan Sibi will play in the final. So I think he will give him game Fitzel. time. Wow. Yes. yes. Based on what? Yes. Based on what? Based on... Based on... So you got to remember, 
every well all the games technically Twan Zibi's played is played fantastic plus Bailly came off against Liverpool the other day for Matic and that's an injury he hasn't been announced yet but I know that's an injury so we're talking about playing the final you said to yeah. Zibi's play the final I reckon Twan Zibi would play the uh, final but, yeah. but, uh, if I'm Bailey and uh, Villarreal is my old club I'll be thinking no I want to play against my old club yeah, well, if he's injured he's injured and to be honest with you I'm, I, I think by his quality and he's probably one of our better defenders but right now, I just think Twan Zabi is slightly ahead of him in performance whenever he plays. I do too, but I, I, I don't think Oli does. And and I think if he's just signed a new contract and it, it, all the confidence come with it, all the bravado, oh yeah, the next three years is going to be good for me and blah, 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 giving all the nice uh, big ups to the fans and everything. I think he's there's a saying that he's going to be starting. He would be yeah. really upset if he doesn't start in the final and if he doesn't start you know these the next couple of day games I, I i i honestly think that like let's 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 forget the the leicester and the liverpool performance right i honestly think that Bayi has been pretty good this season when acts to right mm. i don't know if you guys remember there was this specific game where when the match was over all of Manchester United teammates rushed and the contract right. did Eric Bay. Yeah, I think he made he made he made a, he made a um, yeah. I think that's is that the game where he made that last that last ditch kind of sliding yeah. tackle. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't even for that. It was just that he was he, he was um he was um, amazing that entire that entire game, right? No so for for Ole to put Tuan Zebe in a final, that's that's a big risk. That's a very, very big risk. Um, I would, I'm, I'm pro, and here's, here's the thing. Everybody is probably telling himself, yo, I missed the Europa League final versus Ajax in, when, when Jose Mourinho was at the helm, right? Because he was injured, Luke Shaw was injured, Zlatan was injured, but he's not not us anymore. Eric Bay is probably telling himself, like, you know what? This is my chance to play in the final versus my old club. I am proved to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that, you know what? I am knocking on that door to be, you know, starting in my chestnut 11 in the next season, right? Barring that he is in, barring that he is, I don't want to say he's injury prone as yet. Um, he's not on the same level of like a Aaron Robin or a Robin Van Persie who, who, who have been injured God knows how long their life, for football and career, right? But Eric Bay definitely, in my opinion, should be partnering with Victor Lindelof in that the real final honestly yeah can i can i add i think the reason they were clapping him is because he got through 90 minutes so um if you guys if you like in the contents please like please subscribe this is the man united agenda so let's look at these matches um man united versus fulham so man united 120 fulham won five united's drawn 10 drawn 15 lost four united fulham lost 18 um goal per game well goal, goal per game average at 1.97 against fulham 0 0.71 game ratio their score against united um, our last five meetings, United have won 3 1, which was um, a while back. Then we go to a 2 2 draw, then we won 4 1, then we won 3 0, and then we won 2 1 recently. Look, can any of you guys name like the, the back five for Fulham? No. Um, I know Ariel is in goal, but I, I'm, I'm yeah. not who else he's got, he's got a guy from Leon on loan. That's all I know, really. I can't yeah. really name their players. He's supposed to be pretty good, actually. That guy from Leon is that the one that begins with A? Is he he's a, a Scandinavian a? guy? Um, Scandinavian dude, yeah, he's been taking looking a lot of interest, but yeah, I, yeah. my I point is. That yeah, my point is, I just think um, Fulham haven't got like recognised players, and even though we, we all watch the Premier League, we're, we're struggling to name half their side. You know, it's um, they they they've got a mix and blend of players. You know, I know their forward line. I know they've got a little guy from Everton. Loft, they've moment. got Loftus Cheek as well, but he's out injured. On loan, yeah. So they've come on, got Bobby Bobby Reed as well. Who's yeah, as well. big up Bobby Reed. Big up Bobby Reed. Um, 
So they have got like they got Mitovic, Mitovic as well. Yeah. Yeah, but, but again, for me, yeah, we're saying about certain players, but again, when you look at target, like I said the other day on here, I think the percentage is average. Man United can see something like 48 percent of set pieces. That's where he, they're going to use him. They will yeah. use him against our defense because that's where he goes. He's yeah, but the, the thing is, he's on the bench, but a game like Man United, and you're looking at you know, you're watching these um, set pieces and you're going through all with the players. You're going to look at Man United's weak point. And Man United's weak point is the, the centre-backs, the defence is our weak point. So just because we I... do zonal marking. Yeah, so 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 if we know this, this is an issue, do you think they should change it? The, the zonal marking thing? Do you yes, think they should have yes. A look at it? Okay. yes. I agree, I agree, yeah. Do you think you would enough, have enough time to change it? During the no, season? No, I think end of season, end of season. End of season, end of season. End yeah, not season. now. So, look at it. Yeah. Because also, guys, another thing that's like shocking stats as well. We're bantering Liverpool, who's finishing fourth, which we say is the worst champion in football history. But at the same time, when you actually review it and look at it, we've conceded more goals than them and they haven't had a defence at all. And they conceded seven goals in their second game. Yeah. And we've got worse we've record got, than we've them. Got, we've so. got a six in let's, let's not get it twisted. If, you know, if we're talking about crap defence, we conceded six against Spurs. So, you know, six, one, seven, two, that's the five. E either <laughs> way, that's five. That's the five goal. That's a five goal gap. So, you yeah. know, we've been as good. But then you think about the first three games of the season. What do we concede? Ten goals. Yes. Yeah. So, wow. so, you know, if you look at it like that, I know you can't mind us the first three games of the season, but we could, we start this season cold. We never had no preseason. You know, it took our time to get us. I know it's an excuse, and it's only an excuse that we will use as Manchester United fans, maybe. But it, that that that's a fact. We never had any preseason. You know, the Crystal yeah. Palace game was our second or third game, and, yeah. and it showed those three games. So we conceded. You know, after that, our our defense has been one of the best, but. You can't say how oh, it is when, when we conceded those 10 goals in the season, you know what I mean? But that's when everything started to change, you know? So, yeah, we all right. I understand our our, 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 our defence hasn't been as good as Liverpool's, but it makes no difference. It's, it's, it's still a team thing. You know, their defence has been less. There might be a team out there who's, who's probably scored more than us, but conceded a lot more than than we have. So it's just... It's just where that balance is and where you, you, you work out whether you're, you're happy being a better defensive team or happy being a better attacking team. Me personally, I don't give a toss about clean sheets. I'll be honest, <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather my ball just going two or three goals every game. You know, yeah. clean sheets, great. It, it, it's the base. I understand that. But if you know you're what? only concentrating on being a defensive team, the offensive part of it goes out the window. And that's what I you think what? the problem with Liverpool was this season in regards to, all right, they've conceded one goal less, but we scored more goals because they were so worried that they didn't have Van Dijk. They overcompensated for it being defensive and cut off the whole of the top half of their team. But yeah. that was the thing with Liverpool. Was I said that when they won, that when they won the, the, the league and the Champions League and everything, I was saying they, they sort of play a numbers game which in terms of Numbers of chances created to goal score conversion for Liverpool was massive, whereas most all the other teams was crap. So in Jurgen Klopp's mind, he's like, "Yeah, right." Because you know, you sometimes you'd see him playing, you're thinking, whoa, 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 "What are you doing? Shit! Look at look how high up the pitch they are!" And you're like, "Crap! You get caught out here." But they're not bothered, and that's because he knows he trusts his players to go out there. And he knows if they create four chances, say Liverpool last season, especially. They would they would score minimum very minimum two, yeah. Most of the time three. Whereas he knows that the opposition, if they was to create I don't know two chances, there's a chance they're not even going to score any of them. <laughs> Maybe one. Yeah. So he was always yeah. at the edge in terms of the conversion rate. So for me that was a and we should why why can't we do that Man United? We've got we've got you know we've got I know we haven't got enough players but we've got. We've got so, well, no, I'll say that again. We have got enough players to actually give that an attempt. At, you know, we should have tried that early on in the season. You know, but he then switched to the four, the four, two, three, one. 
Yeah. But um, Liverpool, Liverpool have about seven players that are on the same communication channel, right? Yeah. Um, Robertson and Trent Alexander Arnold, they, they, they know it, they, they know well what each other's gonna do, right? Jordan Henderson, Wijnaldum, and then the front three of Roberto Firmino, Salah, and Mane, they are on the same communication channel. And that's that's what makes a great football team, right? Oh. You, you can't play football just individuals, and that's what Man United has. Man United has Pogba, Man United has Bruno, Man United Cavani. has Cavani, right? Yeah. Okay. If we can get those three, plus, plus, maybe... Donny van der Beek, if he gives, if he's given yeah. a chance, and mm -hmm. Luke Shaw, and possibly Aaron Wambasaka, if all they can get maybe those six or seven players communicating on the same wavelength, it's going to take a couple of games. Don't get me wrong; I don't expect it to be in the first three, three to five games, right? But at yeah. least if we as fans can see that, okay, I mean, like this wasn't here before last season. We, we can see that Wambasaka knows where. Marcus Rashford is going to be at a specific time on the field. We know that we can see Bruno, Pogba, and Cavani. You know, Cavani was here one time. Pogba's in Cavani's place now. But at least Bruno, Fernandez, Cavani, and Pogba know where each other is going to be on the field at a specific time. That's not in Manchester United right now, right? You can see that in Liverpool for at least the last yeah. three to four seasons. Right? Yeah. And that's what Klopp has them doing. Klopp has them doing that at Dortmund. Had, players doing that at Dortmund as well. And just transfer that same philosophy over to Liverpool as well. If Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can have at least six to seven players communicated on the same wavelength and have the discipline to be in certain positions when, let's say, Aaron Wambasaka goes forward or Luke Shaw goes forward, yeah. you will see a different Manchester United for the first two or three seasons. Can I add, yeah. sorry, what, what you're saying, so re, you're comparing Klopp to Oli. We're saying it's, it's not that it's about having a pattern of play, a philosophy of play, a style of yeah. play. Put yep. in, drilled that into his players. That's why it just comes automatic for them. Yeah. They go out there, it's automatic. They know what they're doing. That's where I'm saying we're lacking. The zonal defence, that needs to be improved. That, you're saying the key players, those intelligent players who are like senior players, Pogba, Van der Beek, Cavani, Bruno, who can play and orchestrate on the pitch and know what they have to do. The others need to learn that. But if they had a, the manager, what is he there for then? He's the one who's supposed to implement that into the side. Hence, I've been but saying this all season. Oli is learning. not providing that. That's an area that needs to be improved. Thank you very much, Big Phil. Amanda is learning. Oli's actually even still learning this system himself. Isn't he? That's about right because he did. His his number one system is four three three. So he's. But when you look at like Pep Guardiola, and what I agree with what Phil was saying, when you look at Pep and, and Klopp, it's the. I said it. I, I was talking to someone else about this a few days ago. And it's about the individual roles that you would get as a player and then yeah. the trust you have in your backup. It's like, you know, you know exactly what you've got to do and when you have to do it. Yeah. It's, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, for, for, for Ollie... That, come, that comes from a philosophy of play. You come in, well, you say, if you if someone's signing for us, they're going to come in and say, look, this is how we play. You're going to yeah. come in and you're going to do this job and this job and this job. And they can say, well, I don't want to sign for you. Or I do, oh, yeah, I like the sound of that. I can do that, you know? That's why we've got to look for certain players like Leicester. They buy players based on what they can actually do for the squad. In, yeah. you know, it's not just, oh, yeah, I like you. I've seen your YouTube video. Do you want to come and join us? It's like, no, yeah. you come here. You're going to do this. You're going to make these runs, this position. You're going to pick up the ball here. This is what your job is. You know, that's what it should be. But I don't see, I don't yeah. see that happening. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. That's no, all right. That's all right. Just, I mean, we do see that at times we do see the, the counter, let's say it right. The counter attack seems to be our strength. We, we see that. We know that. That's that. That's our like you know whoosh bang, you you know we'll sit back. You try and break us down and we'll go wallop. There you go. Cut for that because of the pace, etc. But it's that yeah. We, it's the it's the kind of the parking of the bus <laughs> aspect that we kind yeah. of get a little go. We go astray. You see us. In my opinion, we 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 sit. We tend to sort of try a little bit too hard, but at the same time, keep hold of the ball too long. Because why that is though, I. I, I one, that's one thing that I often bang my head against the wall about and ask is why do we do that? There's players who are if you see it consistently, you're not gonna you're not gonna sort of wanna keep making like what you would call dummy runs if there's no ball coming in, because that's what they are. They're just yeah. dummy runs. Yeah, that can get yeah. tiring. Yeah, there, there's there's individual ball retention and then there's team ball retention. And I think yeah. there's certain players in our team that hold on to the ball way too long. I'm gonna call yeah. it Scott. 
going to call it my yeah. that's just just two clears right yeah. Yeah. but if you can get like i said three to five clears playing i don't want to say it's tiki taka right but you have the ability to just hold onto the ball and just read each other read each other's mind and just get into certain channels it's like okay when i complete this third or fourth pass i know where bruno's going to be when i complete mm -hmm. this second pass yeah. i know where cavani's going to be yeah. right when i complete this eighth or ninth pass i know luke shaw is going to be in the box right mm -hmm. so i know that if on the eighth pass and i know luke, luke shaw is not is in the box i know not to back pass probably to my goalkeeper those those, those are the little things you got to work on in the next you got to work on it in preseason definitely for sure yeah you got to work on it during the first three to five games i'm going to tell you straight up i don't mind taking maybe one or two losses in our upcoming season but if I can see a certain style of play that Oregon Social has implemented, I can yep. say, okay, cool. Just give us a little bit of time, and then you'll see a new Manchester United. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. I, Brilliant. Too, actually, I, I do think we have just... seen a bit of that. Go on. Sorry, Mr. Bacon. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It, it, it's just you're saying he doesn't have a, a style of play. Yeah. And we're saying his style of play is 4 2 3 1 counter attack. No. <laughs> It's not, no, 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 no. no. That's, that's not Ollie's style. This is what I'm asking you. So that's not what Ollie plays, no. No, no. I just think I just think we had the the, uh, the players that uh, we got quick players that do when we score. It's always in kind of look at Rashford against Liverpool the other day. That ball was played over top into his into his uh, it, it, it favors him because he's got the pace to beat the defender and he goes in and scores. Those are the sort of goals that uh, he scores. That's that's because he's got the ability, the, the pace. I don't see to so call us a counter attacking team. I think that means Oli, I mean, um, uh, Louis Van, ha um, Jose Mourinho brought his part of the bus thing, which was a philosophy, a style of play, and it's still implemented in some of the players then. Because we just, yeah. that. Oli's supposed to come and say, no, we're not like that anymore. Push up or whatever. I'm not saying do that, but push up higher the pitch. I'm mm. playing like this. I don't see a system play. A system, of play, uh, the formation is the 4 2 3 1. It's not style yes. of play. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. A style of play is, right, play 4-2-3-1. Uh, Bruno, you get the ball, you spray out wide, you get an overlap, and then we cross the ball, and you're coming back post, or we cross the ball. That's the style of play I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to see. So, for example, we've got the players like Luke Shaw can do it. Look at um, Liverpool, Robertson and Trent. They were getting the most they assists. They can do it. They were getting the most assists, for example. I'm not saying play like them, but that's just, I'm giving you an example of their style of play, how they play the ball, why yeah. they're so effective, you know? So they can do, and then they play high at the pitch. They've got two uh, good uh, defenders can go one on one. If the ball goes over the top and deal with it, we don't really have that. Um, they've got um, guys who press high. So if, if they do lose the ball in seconds, they, they're winning it back, you know, or putting pressure on people to, to make a, a Forty pass and that kind of thing. I just want to see a style of play. That's all I'm begging for all season. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. It's been over two years now. He's been there, and I'm just thinking okay. I don't see any kind of pattern here. I'm not, I'm go on, on. I'll tell you what. Okay, go on. Go on. Tell you what, go on go talk, Emu, because we're going to wrap it up in a second this, after you. This is one of the biggest. The, one of the biggest letdowns is this retention of the ball. Like Big Phil was exactly. saying about it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, this in is their the half. Problem. You can't keep the ball in their half. That's the because midfield, though. If you, no midfield. When you keep hold of it for too long, then it, 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 everything kind of like slows down. You're like, oh, oh shit, where, do I go? Do I go or do I stay? What, 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 what do I do? It, and that's that, that inhibits your your sort of ability to sort of read. Right, that's gone into Rashford. Rashford's stuck it down to the wing. Right, I know why I'm going here. I'm going to go right between these two and there's going to be a ball coming in. Yeah. And then yeah. when that ball then doesn't go to Rashford, where you're expecting it, and you're, you're, you've started to make your way, to that sort of position and then you're like yeah well wait a minute then you have to come back out then the ball goes to rush we see this happen lots of times the ball it is it, and do you know what again but this could be another a separate stream as to how yeah. why does that happen why does that happen Don't we can it. fix this stream up for that show just quickly yeah. just quickly uh, when we're talking about players individually like I, i'm blaming rashford and uh, greenwood we i'd rather have two as soon as we put Pogba in that same position he shows he's more creative you know what I'm saying? He's not a bombing on. Rashford's running into traffic all the time and not crossing. So when Rashford was on the right the other day, he done a cross for Cavani. He got his yeah. head up, got the ball, looked up, and sim it's so simple. Look up, get the ball, cross it, and Cavani scored a header. So I'm thinking, well, why can't you get that that's that's drilled into you? You can't play yeah. on the right. Because you you know, because you're not gonna cross with your left foot when you're playing on the left wing. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're playing on the right, and you actually cross the ball, nice delivery, on his on his nut, bam, it's a goal. So that's that is a pattern of play. That's something, right? You get the ball, yeah. get out your feet and cross it. 
Simple. Get in behind. Okay, guys. Get in, get in the ball and behind them. So, guys, quick one. Um, if you're liking the content, please share, please subscribe. We are actually going to go to predict the score and where we can find people. Um, so, guys, Man United, um, Fulham, what is your prediction score? Let's go with Armando with his 1-0. 1-0 Man United. I want us to <laughs> score a goal and manage the game out and see it out. Because when against, against Villarreal, against European big clubs next season, we're going to need to manage our game, in-game management, and um, um, control games like that. That's what I want to see. And I've been begging it for all season. That's why every week, it's one nil prediction for me. Thank you. Talk MU. What's your prediction score? Prediction score is going to be 2-0 United. And the score <laughs> prediction is 3-0. Let's not get no, it no. twisted. I am expecting Fulham to take some licks tomorrow. 3-0. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Solo, what's yours? Uh, I'm solo. Well, I'm going to go with a 2-1. Uh, normally, actually, you know what? 3-1. I always go 3-1. Let's go 3-1. Let's see if it does happen and they can retain a 3-1 win. Yes. Everywhere. So, guys, listen. If you're liking the contents, please share, please subscribe. This is Man United Agenda and I'd like to say thank everyone for being on and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye, yeah. guys.